Today, today, I, I, I don't want you just looking to get something from me. Honestly, I want you looking to get something from God because he doesn't do mistakes. And today is not a mistake. And this moment in your life is not a mistake. So whether you are sitting there in your home or in your car or wherever you may be right now in a movie theater, and maybe you feel a lot of pressure on your shoulders, I want you to know that the God of heaven is interested in meeting you exactly where you are right now. And if you're on top of the world and your belly is full from Thanksgiving and you are ready to jump into God's word, I want you to know God's going to meet you you as well. We have been in a series at Voo Church. It's been absolutely phenomenal these past couple of weeks. Pastor Rich has been bringing absolute fire. I mean, I have been so encouraged. And here we are in week number three. And the title of today's message is A Long Walk Home. A long walk home. Go ahead and put that in the chats if you want to. Go ahead and put it in the chats uh, right now. As you're writing that in the chats, let me say something really, really quick, but something very important. And that is, Pastors Rich and Don Cherie Wilkerson are two of the most amazing people I've ever had the opportunity to meet. My wife and I love them more than you can ever possibly imagine. And uh, I get the, the opportunity to serve on, you know, the board of Voo Church. And I'm humbled and honored to be able to do that. One of a number of individuals that I respect so much. But Rich and Don Cherie have willingly given so much of their heart over not just to God, but to you. And they love laying down their lives to you. And then they willingly say, hey, board, hey, friends, we want to open up our lives to you. So they live lives of such integrity and character. They're so incredibly accountable people that live their lives above reproach. I am honored that I even know them. And I cannot wait to see what God continues to do in them and through them. They are a voice for this generation. So Voo Church, I don't want you taking them for granted. I want you cheering them on and holding up their arms and praying for their babies and praying for every aspect of their life because God is not done with them and he's definitely not done with you. So, okay, okay. So, so I, um, I, a long time ago, because I'm, I'm old now, I'm old <laughs> now, now, now I'm, I'm old and I, I recognize that. But growing up, I spent my summers in New Jersey. And uh, my grandparents uh, lived in New Jersey, so I spent my summers there. My mom would send me to New Jersey. Now, those of you who may be watching and you're not from the United States of America and you're not sure where New Jersey is, just so you know, most Americans don't know where New Jersey is. <laughs> um, it's a state that gets overlooked a lot because it's right next to New York. And who cares about anything other than New York, right? So so we would I would go to New Jersey, and my grandparents lived out in the country country, okay, out in the country. And when you're out in the country and you're a little kid, I mean, you can stay out crazy late. We got into all types of trouble, the good kind of trouble, but got into all types of trouble. But there is nothing like being 11 years old and walking from your friend's house at 11 o'clock at night on a dark country road. <laughs> Think, get out. Think us. Think, I don't know, Freddy Krueger, for those of you who are old. Think uh, Saw. You, when you are 11 years old and you are walking home, you're having so much fun in the house with your friends. You're like, Yo, oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, time to come home. Time to, okay, Grandma. Okay, Grandma, coming home. And then you close that door behind you and you just see the stars and you hear everything. I mean, listen, I'm black, as you can see, all right? So that means, that means if I'm walking and I hear something in the bushes, I don't go investigate what's in the bushes, okay? That's not what I do. What I do... What I do is I will hear something in the bushes, and the second I hear it, I will trust the Lord to handle that, and I am running as fast as I possibly can another direction. Because whenever you and I are in these moments where things are dark and we're, we're on that long walk home, you're sensitive at that time, right? Aren't you? Just a little bit. You're a little bit more tuned in to what you hear and different movements around you. I was praying for you today, Voo Church. 
And I was also praying for those friends of yours and those friends of mine, your brothers and your sisters and your cousins and your co-workers and your fraternity brothers and sorority sisters and your moms and your dads, and you've been praying for a long time that they would be willing to take that long walk home. And I just want to let you know that God has heard every one of your prayers. And I want you to know he is working on people's hearts. And right now it might seem like their heart is a little bit hardened, but I'm, I'm telling you that God is waking up individuals right now. And he's saying, it's time for you to come home. As a matter of fact, there's some of you that are watching right now and you're doing your family member a favor by watching church today. And I just want you to know that in you doing them a favor is actually you responding to the grace of God because God has been after you your whole life and he loves you more than you can ever possibly imagine. And his arms are stretched out wide and he's not here to beat you over the head and he's not here to tear you down. As a matter of fact, he's here to make you new, to take you from lost to found, from blind to see, from dead to alive and for your heart to come alive with purpose and with strength. Today is a day where you get to come home on that long Walk home. I, I want to go with us to Luke chapter, Luke chapter 15, okay? This might be, for some of us, a familiar book of the Bible. If you see something hanging out of my Bible, it's tissue right here. It's tissue. It's cold in this building, and this is, this is my preacher, Hanky. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, uh, Luke chapter 15. Luke chapter 15 is one of my favorite chapters of the entire Bible. If you're not familiar with it, I want to encourage you to read it at some point in time. Let's go Luke chapter 15, and we're going to start reading here in verse number one. Now the tax collectors and sinners were all gathering around to hear Jesus. I already like this. I feel like Jesus would have spent time with me if he's spending time with these folks. So maybe if you feel you're too far off or you made too many mistakes, you just need to know. You need to know that you haven't been drunk too many times. You haven't been divorced too many times. You haven't been bruised and hurt too many times. That Jesus is interested in sitting with the folks that everybody else might want to turn their backs on. We're all gathered around to hear Jesus. But the Pharisees and the teachers of the law, they muttered. The church folks, whew, the church folks muttered. This man welcomes sinners and eats with them. And Jesus goes on uh, for, I'll tell a couple of stories, a couple of parables. Great, great parables. One is about a shepherd and he's got 99, he's got 100 sheep. He loses one and he leaves the 99. He goes after the one. A uh, beautiful picture of what the kingdom of God is like, of what the heart of God is like towards people. He, he goes after the one. Then there's a woman who lost some money and then she goes and she uh, loses this coin and she searches the house and finds the coin and brings it back. And, and when she gets that coin, man, she throws a party. Again, this is what the kingdom of God is like. And then he goes on, and this is Luke chapter 15. We're going to begin reading in verse number 11. Jesus continued, there was a man who had two sons. Everybody say two sons. Two sons. That's right. There was a man who had two sons. Those of you who have been in church for a while, you might know this, this chapter of the Bible, this passage of Scripture as the prodigal son, uh, but it's not the story of just one lost son. It's really the story of two lost sons. One lost son goes away. The other lost son actually stays in the house, and we're going to talk about that here in just a second. There was a man who had two sons. The younger one, I have two sons actually, so I can feel a little bit of this. Two great sons, by the way. The younger one said to his father, Father, give me my share of the estate. I want my money. I want my money now. I want my inheritance. I want my inheritance now. I'm not going to wait for you to die. I want it now. It's essentially him saying to his father, I wish you were dead. I wish you were dead, Dad. Shoot, I get upset if my kids don't want to cuddle with me. And here this dad is hearing, I don't want you to even be alive anymore, Dad. Give me what is owed to me. I know you worked your whole life for it, but I want it because I deserve it. So the father, I think this is interesting, he even divides his property between them, between the older son and the younger son. Verse 13, not long after that, the younger son, the younger son got together all he had and he set off for a distant country. And there 
squandered his wealth in wild living. I want you to see the first long walk that's taken here. The first long walk that is taken is a son asks his father for his inheritance. And then after he gathers all of his stuff together, the Bible says he sets off for a distant country. The first long walk is him leaving his father. So some of us understand what it's like to leave a father. Leave a mother. Some of you and some of us have been running from situations for a very long time. The reason you're in Miami or the reason you're in London or the reason you're in whatever part of the world you're in right now is maybe you were trying to get as far away from a father or a mother or a brother or a situation as you possibly could. And sometimes if you don't have the means to go someplace physically, we have distanced ourselves emotionally. So some of us are in houses and with roommates and with spouses and with friends right now, and we're in the same vicinity physically, but emotionally, we're in a distant country. Our hearts are growing cold. We're getting a little bit angry. Maybe didn't have any place to go for Thanksgiving or the place we had to go for Thanksgiving. We did not even want to go there. And, and you have all of this junk going on in your head and in your heart, and you're in a, a distant country so this young son is there and as he's in this distant country he starts squandering his living he he takes his money he goes to Vegas Uh, he goes to some part of the world where you can just spend all your money act crazy he's getting drunk every night The, the bar every every drink is on him I mean it's just bottles on bottles on bottles on bottles some of y'all now you're like yeah I'm into this I'm into this 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 is my story you just you know rolling blunts I mean you know is that too much for some of y'all right there (laughs) yeah you you have this young man out there doing his thing smoke Snorting, what do you even do with cocaine anymore? I don't even know. I don't know if you put it in your ear. I don't even know. He's out there acting crazy, acting wild, and he loses everything. He loses everything. He loses everything. Remember when we were so smart that we knew what to do with our lives and we like, okay, this is my plan. This is where I'm going. I'm going to go to this school and then I'm going to get this job and then this thing's going to happen and then I'm going to cross this T and I'm going to dot that I. And we had our three-year plan and we had our five-year plan and right now we're in a spot that we're like, oh, no, 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 no. This is not what I put down in my journal. This is not what 2020 was supposed to look like. I did not pray for this. This is, I want my money back guarantee from that prophet. I want every, what in the world happened? Lost it all. Now, in this particular case, he lost it all. But there are some other times that you lost it all, not because of anything you did, but because of what somebody else did. Like because of their decisions, you lost it all. Some of us are, are, have, have walked through a divorce, not because we got divorced, but because our parents did. And when our parents did, we are now feeling the brunt of that. Now, some of us, were like, we're great, we're good. We're like, I got two Christmases, two Thanksgivings, I'm happy, and you, you made it through A-OK. But there's some of us that are still wounded and still carrying some of that stuff on our shoulders. Some of us got burned by a business partner, and we knew that that business was going to take off. And then they went and did this thing with the board and took all the people their way and took the investments their way. And now we are left holding the bag and dealing with things with the IRS. And we're like, what in the world is going on? with my life and you are left in a pig pen not because of what you did but because of what somebody else did my mom or my my, my mom my wife (laughs) can't get them confused all right can't mess that up can't mess that up (laughs) i love them both so much that's why um my wife uh we just had our 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 women's conference a a couple weeks ago uh here it was a great great wonderful time and my my uh my beautiful wife was sharing a story uh, but from a family in our church uh, who, are, who are foster parents. And uh, 
great, great couple. And they were just talking about the dynamic of what they called a quick removal. I had actually never heard this term. Uh, my wife and I, uh, two out of our three kids uh, are, are adopted, but uh, we, we did like the private adoption. So we, we, we don't know a ton about the, the foster care system other than, you know, what we've read uh, in books and seen uh, in movies. And as we've connected with friends and, and family members in our church uh, who have been uh, courageous enough to, and, and loving enough and Christ-like enough to open up their home to these beautiful babies. And, and this couple in our church was telling us about A quick removal. What happens is after a lot of investigative work, CPS shows up and they have to get that kid out of the house and they have to get the kid out of the house now. So they bring with them a trash bag. And not because of anything that the kid did. But because of what guardians or parents or what somebody said that they did. They come with that trash bag and they give that kid a few minutes to take everything they possibly can and to put it in that bag. So stuffed animals or shoes. Hopefully they remember to grab underwear and a shirt and their favorite blanket. And can you imagine being 9, 10, 12 years old, 5 years old, and trying to figure out, what do I need in my bag? In this passage of Scripture, this young son, he finds himself in a pig pen. He's wasted all he's had. These foster kids, it was some, something that somebody else did to them, but however you end up in the pig pen. Pig pen is a pig pen is a pig pen. Something interesting happens. Man. Verse 17, verse 17 tells us when he came to his senses, When this young son came to his senses, when this young daughter came to her senses, she said, he said, how many of my father's hired servants have food to spare? And here I am starving to death. I will go, I will set out and I'll go back to my father and I'll say to him, father, I've sinned against heaven and against you. I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired servants. Servants, verse 17 here, you got to dig into this, okay? Just for a second, I need you to feel this. I need you to feel it. So you're in the pig pen. You are in the apartment. You are in a school you don't want to be in. You're in the job you don't want to be in. You're in a year, 2020, you don't want to be in. You're in a marital status you don't want to be in. You are in a situation you don't want to be in. You are surrounded with people and stuff and toxicity that you do not want to be in. Then there comes the moment just like this young son you come to your senses it's like a light bulb goes off it's like wait what am I doing here why am I with you why am I paying for you why am I covering every single bill why did I move in with you what was why what was my uh, what was I thinking when I thought our relationship would be better if we moved in together and things have just gotten more toxic over the years what has been going on here and you can feel stuck you can feel like I don't have any way out. I, I, I don't know what to do. I don't know which way to go. And, and now somebody was inviting you to Vu and somebody was telling you, but you're like, what Vu? What, 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 what? What's the name of this church? Uh, but but you, you keep on watching week in and week out and you're experiencing the love uh, from Pastor Rich and Pastor DC and, and from the rest of the team and you're hearing the songs. You're like, hmm, something's going on in my heart. But then you still drift back and you go back to the pig pen, but then you still come back again and you're like, hey, hey, come over here. 
check out this church with me and tell me if it's a cult because I don't want to do a cult thing, but I'm feeling really, really good. Like, like Jesus is like, he's doing something in my heart. It's you coming to your senses. My friends, you don't need to run the opposite direction. As a matter of fact, it's the God of heaven that's drawing you closer. It's the God of heaven that's saying, come on in. Come on, don't listen to the lies. Don't listen to the naysayers. Don't listen to all the haters. Don't listen to all the Twitter. Don't listen to all the Instagram. I'm telling you right now, God has been after you. If this is you coming to your senses and not just because you're good, it's because God's so good. He's helping you here. Have your eyes open and to see what, what am I doing here? Okay, so, so he starts going home, okay? He starts walking home. This is awesome. This is awesome right here. Verse 20, so he got up, he went to his father, but while he was, but while he was still a long way off, his father saw him, I love this, and was filled with compassion, not anger, not rage, not hate, not judgment. His father was filled with compassion. You didn't know the God of heaven is not filled with anger. He's not filled with rage. He's not filled with hate towards you. He's filled with compassion towards you. And he ran to his son. He runs to his son. Okay. I want to spend a ton of time on that, but I'm not going to. Okay, I'm not going to. Because I had another question. I was reading this, thinking about this son in the pig pen and thinking about him taking this long walk home, thinking about the father, seeing him from a distance, running after him. And I was thinking, wait, who paved the road for that young man to get home. No, I know, I know, I know there's a son and I know there's a father and I know there's a house, but like he had to walk. He had to walk on a road to get home. So I'm just trying to feel the story. I'm trying to feel the story. I'm trying to put myself in the Middle East. I'm trying to feel that, 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 like that, that day. I'm trying, to, I'm trying to feel the air. I don't, I don't know what time of the year it was. I'm just trying to insert myself into the story here. And I know, I know they didn't have Uber. <laughs> I know that. <laughs> there's no Lyft. <laughs> there's, no, there's no city bike. <laughs> this young man's got to walk. On a road, home. I just thought, who paved it? You ever, uh, you ever have to get anywhere and it's a marathon? Like there's a, there's a marathon going on in the city. Okay, yeah. basically you're you're stuck. Okay, <laughs> Where, wherever you are. You're not going anywhere. You will be there for the rest of your life. And, and it happened. You don't know that it's happening. You take a left and a right, and all of a sudden, eh, you're done. You're done. And here are these really short, short, shorted individuals running past you, showing stuff they should not be showing. But here they are running past you. And you're, you're just stuck there. Ever been in a traffic jam? I mean, you're like, okay, yes, I'm going to take this quick route. And Waze or Google or Siri just did you dirty. You know, it's like, oh, turn left here. Okay, I think I'm getting there faster. And here you are. You put me in the traffic jam. And I, I got to get somewhere. So you're sitting there. It's like, Ugh. there is nothing like when you're trying to get somewhere, but you can't get there because the roads are blocked because there's no way to get there. I'm so thankful that for this son, there was a road for him to get home. Somebody took some time out and paved the way for him to get there. I don't know who it was. I don't know when they did it, but I'm just so glad that somebody went ahead of him and paved a way for him to get back home. So when he was taking that long walk, there was a path for him to walk on. So I wondered, 
Just some questions for you, for your heart and my heart. Just some questions, okay? Just some questions. Um, how much of your ego are you willing to lay down so someone can walk home? How much of my ego am I willing to lay down so that someone can walk home? We got to ask ourselves this question because nowadays, I mean, this is a pump yourself up, puff yourself up, make yourself look good. Okay, think about the last picture that you posted. How many pictures did you take before you posted that one? Come on, talk to me here. Talk to me. Don't, don't get quiet. Now everybody's trying to get quiet. Like, oh, I don't know what you're talking about. No, I mean, that filters that my face always looks like that. Okay, <laughs> listen, we live in a day and age. It's like, I got to look good. Yeah. I'm not mad about that. It's no, no problem at all. I even put some shine proof stuff on my head right now. So I wasn't glaring you all out. So here, I, I, I'm, I totally get, you know, we want to look our best. That makes total sense to me. But I'm wondering, in our quest to be, to look our best, I think our egos at times can kind of be mixed in with a lot of different things that are going on. And God is talking to, he's trying to build a church. He's trying to build a people. He's trying to build a community. He's trying to build up VU to be the type of place that is willing to say, my ego does not matter here. My pride does not matter here. My fame does not matter here. You have two pastors and two leaders that could be all about self, but instead they choose to be all about Jesus. As beautiful as they are, as talented as they are, they still continually lay down their lives for others. Vu Church, I'm telling you, if you are willing to lay down your ego, you will, lay, you will pave a road for so many lost sons and daughters to come home. But that's not the only question. How much, how much of your time are you willing to lay down to pave a road for someone else? A uh, huge shout out to uh, the team that serves, serving leaders at VU. So thankful for you. <laughs> been a unique season for our church folks, no doubt about it. Been a unique season, but man, you continue to grind and love and serve. So proud of you. So proud of you. Those of you at the movie theater, so proud of you. Those of you who have been opening up your home, so incredibly proud of you. Those of you who have been a part of the serve days and getting in the community, so, so proud of you. And if you haven't been able to, because maybe you've been uncomfortable with everything going on with COVID, we totally understand. But, but the question is that you, we're all going to continue to have to ask as a church family is how much of my time yeah. am I willing to lay down to pave a road for someone else? Another question, how, how faith-filled will my prayers be to pave a road for someone else? Like, am I going to pray small prayers, like weak prayers? What's a weak prayer? Oh, God, just bless my life if you want to. I'm not mad at you if that's how you pray right now. I'm just letting you know that's not how a son or a daughter of the king prays. I'm just letting you know once you've given your heart and your life to Jesus Christ, you've been made new, that his precious love and blood has cleansed you from all of your sin, that you have gone from lost to found, that you are no longer some orphan sitting in the corner somewhere. You are now a son and a daughter of Almighty God, and you have permission to enter into like his kingdom and into his throne room, and you don't have to come in there sheepishly. You come in there boldly. You come in there like you're walking into mom and dad's room, and you say, God, I thank you that you're for me. I thank you that you love me and because you're so good would you do for someone else what you did for me I pray as a matter of fact the Bible says this if you ask him for nations he'll give it if you ask him for nations he'll give it and you and I are interested in just praying prayers about ourselves my friends don't limit our prayers just to ourselves don't just pray that you get a million dollars pray that you that you would have the type of capacity to give a million dollars pray that you would have the type of capacity where you can lay down your life for humanity and say God use my life for your glory I'm talking big prayers I'm talking prayers that will tear down sex trafficking I'm talking prayers that will tear down homelessness 
this. I'm talking prayers that will empty the foster care system of every kid and put them in a loving home. I'm praying, praying God, the kind of prayers that make sure that loss and brokenness and anxiety and suicide and depression and all of these things are falling by the wayside as we see his kingdom come and his will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Big prayers, faith-filled prayers, Holy Spirit-inspired prayers, prayers that will shake a nation, prayers that will shake a world for the cause of Jesus Christ. So here, here you got, you got ego, you got to lay that down. And time, you got to lay that down. Prayers, got to put them up. <laughs> then, let me look. Come here. Let's have a family meeting for a second. How about money? How much money? Come on, don't get uncomfortable. Don't get uncomfortable. Come on, just breathe. Come on, you use it all the time. How much money are you and I willing to give to pave a road for someone else? How much is too much? How much is too much for your cousin? How much is too much for your niece, your nephew, your roommate? How much is too much for your loved one? The one that's sick in the hospital, how much is too much for that? How much is too much for your boyfriend, your girlfriend, husband, wife? How much is too much? Let me ask this in reverse. How much do you wish someone would have given for you? Okay, instead of us doing it for somebody else, just put yourself, be the other for a second. Be the one who's on the long walk home. Because once you get in the house, we get comfortable. <laughs> we kind of forget what it was like for the long walk home. Now we're in the house and we've got our seat and we got our PJs and we got our slippers. Big shout out to Christmas slippers, okay? I just want to give a big shout out to Christmas slippers. Man, there's nothing like them. So, I mean, you get your cozy slippers on, you got your blankie, you got your spot, you're just feeling good, happy. But do you remember? Do you remember when you're in the pig pen? Do you remember holding your trash bag? Do you remember when you came to your senses? Do you remember your long walk home? I think, I think one of the things that the enemy likes to do with us is forget our long walk home. Try to make it shorter. Make it feel like it wasn't that big a deal. Like you would have ended up there anyway. Come on, it wasn't God. That was you. Oh, you were born in America. That's why. It's because of your parents. That's why. It would have happened eventually. Negating the grace and the power and the tenacity of this father that sees his son and his daughter from a long way off and comes running. I, I know, Vu, you're in just a couple weeks going to have the opportunity to step up in a significant way financially. I know that's coming on December 13th. And I know we're playing the long game. And I know this long game that we are playing here is to see the lost sons and daughters of God come on home. And you and I get to be a part of paving the road for them. Let's not take this moment for granted. I'm going to shut my mouth here. Okay, I'm going to shut my mouth, but let me just say this. Let me say these last couple of things, okay? Last couple of things that I, I think are important. Come over here. Last couple of things. The father doesn't even respond to the son's request to make him a hired servant. I love that in the story. The father immediately turns to the other servants and says, hey, bring this son of mine a ring. This is verse 21. Bring him the best robe. 
put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. And then he says, bring the fattened calf and kill it. Sorry, vegans. Bring the fattened calf and kill it. God still loves you, and I believe God made all the plants of the field. Yes, I'm all for kale. But, but in this story right here, Jesus is like, we're throwing down. We're going to have some barbecue. So here they have a feast, and they celebrate because the son of, my, who, son of mine who was lost is now found. I want you to see that the father walked out to meet that son. Verse 25, meanwhile, the older son was in the, in the field. And when he began to walk closer to the house, he heard music and dancing. He ends up getting upset that his brother's home. But I want you to see, and you can read this later, that the father walked out to him too. See, this father of ours, he doesn't just go after those who are outside the house and lost. He also goes after those who are inside the house and lost. Meaning those who are inside the house and have made their relationship with God about works and not about love. Made their relationship with God about their behavior and not the finished work of Jesus Christ. Made their relationship with God about whether or not they're able to cross their T's and dot their I's and be good instead of keeping their walk with Him based on his goodness and his mercy and his grace. He walks out to both. And now, Vu Church, he's calling on all of us to pave a road that the father can walk on (laughs) and that the lost sons and daughters can walk on. I still remember (laughs) heading home After watching Nightmare on Elm Street 17, (laughs) as an 11 or 12 year old, being terrified, but knowing I had to get home. And I made it home every single time. And I'm thankful for the twinkling stars in the sky, and I'm thankful for the sunlight that was reflecting off of the moon. But I'm also very thankful that some people I did not know paved the road for me so I can make my way back home. And now you and I get the opportunity to do that. Let's be ridiculously generous because God paved the road for us. Would you bow your heads just for a moment? I want to pray for you. If you've never given your heart and your life to Christ, you've never made him first, you've never made him number one. You've never surrendered your heart to Jesus Christ. Maybe you're hearing this message right now, you're watching the screen right now, and, or you're, you're just hearing this through some podcast, and you're like, oh my goodness, I'm the one in the pig pen. I'm the one coming to my senses. Or maybe you really feel like you're in the house right now, but you just drifted in your walk with God. It's gotten old. It's gotten stale. It's gotten boring. There's no life there because now it's been based on your behavior or maybe something that God has not done for you that you think he ought to have done for you. And you're saying, I don't want a heart that's grown cold anymore if you are under the sound of my voice and you've never given your heart to Jesus or at one point in time you didn't, you slipped away. And today you're ready to give your heart and your life over to him for the first time or to rededicate your life to serving him on the count of three. I just want you to do something simple, but something really bold. I just want you to put your hand over your heart right now. Ready? One, two, three. Just put your hand over your heart. It's a sign of you saying, God, I want you to have the core of me. I want you to have the real part of me. No more games, no more masks, no more faking it. God, I want to be real. I want you to have me inside and out. And I want you to repeat this prayer after me, friends. You're going to say, dear Jesus, I ask you to forgive me of all my sins. I admit I've made mistakes and today I give you my heart. I give you my life. Give me the power to live for you in Jesus' name. Amen. Can we clap our hands? Move church. Come on on every couch at every movie theater, on every job, you clap your hands. It's a moment of transformation. I love you so much. Your pastors love you so much. And the best days are ahead. Come on, we're in this for the long game. Love you, church.
Hey, Rich Wilkerson here. I want to say a big thank you for watching today's content, believing and trusting that it impacted you. And if it did help you or it encouraged in any way, I would love for you to like it and share it with some other people. Make sure to subscribe to the VU Church YouTube page where you can get more content just like this. And while you're there, go peruse the gallery, as they say, and see past talks and past content that I believe is gonna help you. I love you. Best is yet to come.